Despite owning pretty much every portable gaming solution under the sun, there's one device I still gravitate towards when it comes to getting that portable gaming fix. And ironically, it's the very first one I ever bought. The Sony PlayStation Portable, better known as the PSP. I'm showing you this one for that OG PSP look, which by the way, this little baby turns 16 exactly today. That video was supposed to come out yesterday. I ran out of time, so let's just pretend I'm not one day late. And it's one day, cut me some slack. But for the sake of accuracy, this is the one that I actually play on on a daily basis. The PSP Go, the white one. I have a black one as well. Can you tell I love the PSP? You know, this device has been so great to me over the years. It has followed me on pretty much every flight I ever took. It's the system I beat the most games on and PSP related content has always done really well here on the channel. I love it, you guys love it. So let's talk about the PSP a little more. A very interesting thing about the PSP is that every time I make a PSP video, views from the Philippines skyrocket for some reason. Apparently this thing is wildly popular in the Philippines. So salamat sa pananood. I hope I didn't butcher that. There goes all my Filipino viewership. Now I've made it pretty clear that the main reason I love this system is emulating other systems. It's almost sad in a way that I put so much time on the PSP, but it wasn't with the actual PSP library. I took the PlayStation Portable moniker, kind of literally, and PS1 titles, which this thing emulates flawlessly, is what I spend the majority of my time doing on the console. Also, obviously, Game Boy games. I guess that goes without saying. I'll run Game Boy games on literally anything I can get my hands on. Also, SNES. Oh my god, a lot of SNES games. I must have played the SNES library on this thing a thousand times more than I ever played it on an actual SNES. And I have a hacked SNES Mini, a little dusty, with a lot of games. A lot of the games that I have on my PSP Go, I have on this thing as well. And yet, I sank a lot more time on this platform here than on anything else when it comes to SNES games. However, lately I decided to do a deep dive into that great PSP library because make no mistake, this thing had some absolute bangers. Considering how little I've covered actual PSP games throughout my career, it's about time I changed that, I think. So today, we're going to have a look at three titles I've been sinking my teeth into these days. Starting with Lemmings. The other day, I was thinking about the games that played a pivotal role in my childhood years. You got Command and Conquer, that 1995 classic which ignited a lifelong passion for the real-time strategy genre. One of the most memorable things about Command and Conquer in my childhood is that my dad wouldn't let me install the demo that came on one of those computer magazines. Uh, on our family computer, he wouldn't let me do it because the game was too big and how big you might be asking yourself? 50 megabytes. Back then, that was a lot and my dad wouldn't let me install it because he was afraid it was gonna slow down the computer. Then, you have Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which I have been playing pretty much nonstop since it came out, despite the fact that I don't even like the fantasy genre all that much. Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, Game of Thrones, none of that does anything for me, with the notable exception of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Then you have the original GTA, which, let me tell you, I cannot even begin to explain how much I loved that game as a kid. And it was the first game I learned how to mod to add new cars and new cities and stuff like that. Then you have Lemmings, which I have always loved. But I realized the other day I've been in the closet about being a huge fan of this franchise. I've played almost every game in this series, including the super obscure one nobody else seems to like, like Lemmings Paintball. Loved the soundtrack in that game, by the way. And I have to say, the PSP port of Lemmings is downright flawless. It's like everything you could possibly want out of a port slash remake. In case you've been living under the world's saddest rock all your life, Lemmings is a puzzle slash real-time strategy game where you direct 
a bunch of little anthropomorphized lemmings around obstacles and pitfalls to an exit. Sounds simple, right? The lemmings will drop from a box in the sky, which has been a long-standing staple of the series, and just walk around aimlessly without regard for their own safety and it's up to you to assign tasks to them in order to get them to the finish line. There are several skills you can assign to your lemmings to help them get to the exit. Climbing, digging, blocking, uh, building stairs, etc. The levels start out pretty straightforward. Like in the first level, all you have to do is make one lemming dig straight down and that's pretty much it. Like they all make it, that's all you need to do. Other levels are far more complex and require you to manage a screen full of lemmings while you send out one lone scout to figure out the path for the rest. And obviously this is a game that's better suited for either a touchscreen or a mouse, but it works really well on the PSP. If you're completely unfamiliar with the Lemmings franchise, you're going to find that this is a really fresh, interesting take on both the puzzle and real-time strategy genres. And I've always been such a huge sucker for that pixelated look and the concept of destructible environments. Like being able to destroy the environment in a game forces you to be creative and stimulates you to figure out a path that may not have been exactly what the level designer had in mind. And that's my favorite thing in puzzle games, being able to figure out a way for yourself. You don't have to do exactly what the game wants you to do. I've always considered Lemmings sort of a sibling title to Worms, what with the pixelated characters that have a bunch of different skills that they can use to destroy the environment around them. It's another series I love and I, there are actually a few Worms titles for the PSP, so stay tuned. This version of Lemmings is essentially a port of the first game with the 120 original levels, plus 36 brand new levels, as well as a level editor and the ability to share levels online, which was pretty incredible for a portable back in 2006. Strangely, when the game was remade again for the PS3, it's effectively the same game, but the level editor and the level sharing feature were removed for some reason. It's no surprise that the PSP version is the one with the better reviews. With over 150 levels, this will keep you busy for a long time. Next, we have Field Commander. The absolute best, most concise way to explain Field Commander is to just go, do you know Advanced Wars? Take away the typical Japanese flair, the cartoony look, add some 3D models and a far, far more robust multiplayer mode, leave it in the oven for 15 minutes, you got Field Commander. And I really mean, well, obviously not the oven part. I really mean that. The gameplay is effectively identical. The most significant difference is that Field Commander is 3D in every way. The units are 3D models, the map can be rotated and viewed through different angles, and perhaps most importantly from a gameplay standpoint, units can be stacked to occupy the same spot depending on their height. So you can have an air unit that's way up high above a sea unit, which is above a submarine unit. You can't have that in Advanced Wars. Every unit occupies its own little square. So that changes the gameplay a bunch. But the differences don't stop there in Field Commander, unlike Advanced Wars, you can actually destroy the terrain as well as enemy cities. The game had a level editor, just like Lemmings, and player-made levels, just like Lemmings, could be shared online and you could play multiplayer and everything. The multiplayer aspect offered pretty much every option you could possibly want, including something that was pretty rare for the time, asynchronous multiplayer, meaning you log in, you receive the moves from your opponent, you make your own, and then you can just log out, put your PSP back in your pocket and go on with your day. And yes, matches would take forever that way, but it's a very viable solution to playing multiplayer games on the go at your own convenience. I loved it. Come to think of it, asynchronous multiplayer is kind of rare even nowadays. Like the only game in my entire collection that has that mode is Wargroove on the Switch, which is also an Advanced Wars clone. You know what, Intelligent Systems? These guys wouldn't need to keep trying to remake Advanced Wars if you got off your asses and made a new Advanced Wars. It's been like, what, 11 years now, I think? I get it, the Fire Emblem series makes way more money, but come on, I have like a bigger channel than this, and I'm still making videos for this one. And finally, Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, which is basically an enhanced remake of Mega Man X on the SNES. This one is a little harder to talk about at length because it's just Mega Man X with 3D models and environments. They didn't really change much else other than that, the gameplay, the physics, the levels, pretty much everything mirrors the original 
SNES release in every way. The notable additions are a remix heavier sounding soundtrack that I really love, the anime-esque cutscenes that I can really do without because I'm not an anime guy, and the added voice acting on the visual novel narrative bits, which are very common for Japanese games. Oh, yes, okay. So there's also an unlockable mode where you play as Vile, one of the villains of the game. Keiji Inafuni, one of the series' most well-known designers, thought that playing as Zero, another villain, would just be too obvious, so Vile was added to this version instead. Oh, and by the way, Maverick Hunter X is not the only enhanced Mega Man remake on the PSP. Those who prefer the earlier Mega Man adventures on the NES would probably like Mega Man Powered Up better, which some dislike back in the day because it has a cartoony look, but it's also a great title with awesome reviews. So that's, that's two for the price of one there. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a like, that helps a lot. And by the way, if you're curious at all about the behind the scenes aspect, everything that goes into creating these videos, you should probably follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of behind the scenes footage there, a lot of little, I explain how to make videos effectively. So you should follow me there. But what do you think? Let me know as always in the comments down below. That's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done. Oh, shit, I should have, wait a second. I, I did a whole thing on Google Translate on how to say this in Tagalog for my Filipino uh, viewers and I forgot how to say it.